Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we bring back the Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast series. It's been a hot minute since I've posted or <laughs> at least talked about the Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast or posted a video with the title Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast in it. I feel like White Boy 7th Street with me doing our typical intro because I'm using his Black Ops gameplay that you're seeing on the screen right now. Shout out to White Boy 7th Street. I, I still love watching his videos that I remember growing up with in junior high. and it oh, I've been so nostalgic lately. And that's why I wanted to bring a Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast episode because in all honesty, I just have no drive to be talking about the current format because... To me, the current format is just so boring. Like, this is the type of period that I've mentioned in the past where Yu-Gi-Oh! is just dying. Like, not that the game as a whole, like, is just going to die off and we're never going to have competitive events. It's just that this is a dying season. Like, a lot of people say this format's great because it's so diverse. And I agree, it is diverse. But as good of a format as it is... This Rubik's Cube has been solved, ladies and gentlemen, and it doesn't make it fun to play in because, like, if you want to do well in this format, then you just play whatever rogue or meta deck or tier one, tier two deck that you want to play. You throw in six Book of Moons, maybe nine to 12 hand traps, depending on what kind of deck you're playing, and, like, you just move on with your day. Like, it it was funny because I saw a comment earlier today where... uh. Some guy had said, is, is this a hot take or not? Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! has been terrible since 2005. And I'm like, uh, no, it hasn't been terrible since 2005. I don't know why you hate GOAT format so much, but no, like those old formats, those old formats are really fun to go back to. And it's not even that Yu-Gi-Oh! is bad now. Like a lot of people, as I've talked about on the channel multiple times, people are like, oh, you know, the game got terrible when links were introduced or pendulums or whatever. But I mean, when you step back and look at the game from an objective point of view, the game really is in a good spot right now. It is very diverse. It's just that the issues that are in the meta when they rear their ugly head, you're reminded of why this format is so liquid ass. Like, I don't think anyone can make a valid argument that having Eradicator Epidemic Virus in the meta is okay, or having King Calamity in the meta is okay. Like, I understand that it's a YouTube combo in the eyes of most people, but like, a lot of people saw the Super Heavy Samurai FTK with Cyberstein as a YouTube combo, and that shit got banned anyway. So it's like... Uh, King Calamity just needs to go. This sh that should not even exist in the game. Like, uh, being able to FTK the opponent with King Calamity, basically FTK them because then they just can't play, is just so unfair and it's so toxic that I just I don't want to deal with it. And yeah, like, Hash Tira, if your deck is able to play six books, then yes, like, uh, Cash Tira is not that terrible, but still, like, having to go that hard in the paint for that matchup is just... It's really toxic, and it, it just, it's not fun to me. Like, did I hit my one of Book of Moon, like, one of my six books? Like, if you don't, then, like, you lose. And it's just, it doesn't make for an enjoyable experience. So I've been taking it easy from the game, um, not just because whether or not I get banned is still under investigation. I that's That whole thing is still going on. I've barely been sleeping because of that, too. I mean, th this was almost a month ago, and I haven't heard anything on it. Um, I'm assuming I'm not banned, knock on wood, but, I mean, there are people that I've seen on YouTube who didn't even find out that they got banned until six months after the whole thing happened. So, I don't know. It's it's all under investigation. I'll, I'll be talking about that Um once all of that kind of blows over and like I can explain everything that, that happened and it's it's a whole big to do. I, I think it's going to blow over fine. Um, it's just a matter of dealing with it and, you know, throwing it under the rug and, and just getting by it and just sort of moving on, you know. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. That hasn't really affected my joy of the game. It's more just made me concerned about it. Um, but at the same time, I, I've also come to the uh, acceptance of 
I've played this game for 15 years, you know, I've had a good run, I've made a lot of great memories, I've been able to entertain you on YouTube, and, you know, it's, it's been great in that regard, but I've been mostly playing retro format, you know, I've, I've been playing GOAT format, I've been doing different old formats, uh, even playing the old World Championship DS games, just to go back to a simpler time, you know, I, I enjoy the game in 2023 for what it is. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, Pendulum's killed the game. Oh, the, the game is so terrible now. Uh, in the eyes of many, yes, it's terrible. But I think when you take the time to adapt and learn these new decks and play something that you enjoy, that yes, it is possible to get enjoyment out of the modern era of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, but besides that, I'm actually, speaking of that, um, working on a design of Yu-Gi-Oh series where... What I'm hoping to do is like break down the game to like its atomic bits and like really kind of break down how the game functioned when it first started compared to now and like the Raigeki economy that people have talked about and how, you know, baiting stuff out like Mirror Force and stuff used to be a big whole thing. And it's I think it's going to be really interesting. I think you guys are definitely going to like it. Um, outside of that, like... It, I've just been taking it easy, you know, like I've been playing Starfield today, I really don't know how big of a fan I am of Starfield, if I'm being completely honest, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't think it's the game for me, uh, it was actually funny, because I texted my best friend earlier today, and I'm like, bro, you come across these mini little Halo rings, like you see in Halo, like it's the same thing as the Halo rings, but they're tiny, and you can step into them, and I'm like, bro, this shit looks like the wheel of power from Hot Wheels, <laughs> Like, if you don't know what that is, just look up Wheel of Power Hot Wheels, and, like, you'll you'll see what I mean, and that's literally what it looks like. And once you see that, and you see in Starfield, like, the little Halo Wheel of Power thing that you step into, you, you can't unsee it, and it's really funny. Um, but the the game's okay. It's it's a Bethesda game. It's actually the best working Bethesda game, which is funny enough. Um, there's some bugs here and there, uh, some little visual glitches, but it's not anything that's just game breaking. Nothing like Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven on launch because I played that on launch. That shit was rough. Um, but yeah, I mean, things are just stale. You know, it's it's kind of a slow time right now, even in my life too. I was able uh, to finally get a job back in the pharmaceutical industry that I was working in for a while. I don't really know how I feel about that because a part of me does definitely want to be in like television uh, or radio and I'm not in that now. So it's it's kind of like feeling like I'm between a rock and a hard place, but the money's going to be good. I mean, that's definitely going to help pay some bills and stuff like that. But uh, me mentally, I, I feel like I'm, I'm doing good despite, you know, my VHL and the cancer and stuff and, and all that, that comes with it. But, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes you just have to sit back and realize, you know, I've got a roof over my head. I've got a family that loves me. I've got great friends. I'm making YouTube videos for an amazing audience, despite me getting trolled by Zodiac duelists and all this other crap. And it's, it's, it's a joy. It really is a joy. It was funny because when if you've been keeping up with the channel, then you'll know I, I got trolled by Zodiac Duelist for a while. Um, and I ended up taking down the original video because some, like, people were calling me an incel and, and all this other crap that, like, just wasn't true um, based upon, like, comments that I made in the video, which is, is just whatever. Like, I was just like, you know what, Let, let's just take down this video. But uh, there is a guy who had commented saying, maybe your channel would actually be successful after posting for over 12 years, if you actually put up good content or something. And I'm like, clearly you didn't look at the dates of the videos because over these past 12 years, I've stopped making videos for like months and even years on end and then come back and then went back on a hiatus. Like I've done this like three or four times. It's only now that I really buckled down and gotten really uh, serious about it and like actually knew what I was doing. Um, but yeah, so that, that was kind of hilarious to see, but that, that was a while back. I mean, all those comments are deleted and gone at this point because I'm not going to leave comments up on my channel when people are just trolling, but, uh, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! is, is in a really, really interesting spot. I mean, uh, all the tins and reprints and stuff, I'm not even investing in the tins because there's no point. The only set that really should be on your radar right now to invest in is age of overlord like if you can if you can afford a case of age of overlord 
you're going to be making some good money because that set's going to be bananas. That set is going to be awesome. But it just depends on what our next ban list is. I'm thinking at some point in September, if not early October, we'll get a list. And then whatever this next ban list we get is, that's going to probably carry us to like December or January, which is probably why Konami is waiting to drop it because they want it to pull us all the way to the new year so that we can start off the year fresh with a new list and kind of get things back on track and have something at least somewhat consistent, even though they don't even give us a damn end date. But guys, let me know what you think about this Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast episode. I, I enjoy just being able to sit here and, and talk and just get my thoughts out there, you know, especially when I'm just not interested in talking about a solved Rubik's Cube in the form of this current Yu-Gi-Oh! format and like trying to make a fuss about something where there doesn't need to be one, you know, like I'm not going to sit here and try and talk about the format when there's nothing to talk about. If you've been playing in this format even for like just two months, then congratulations, you solved the format. Like there's nothing nothing new to talk about. And I think that that's okay because sometimes you need to take a break from the hobby that you really enjoy so that when you come back to it, it's like you can look at it with a fresh set of glasses, so to speak, and not feel so jaded from a previous format. Sometimes some time away can help you come back and love it even more, if not the same amount, so that you don't start hating the game. Because as a lot of people will tell you, you don't quit Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh quits you. So guys, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.